Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to do your white balance project. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to choose any one of these images to use as the background image. So um, I'm going to just click on this first one here. Now keep in mind I've got them all open here. I went ahead and opened them in advance so that we'd be ready to rock, but remember you just go to File Open and then Locate those pictures to get them open. So for this one I can choose any image to be the background image. All right. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to drag all of these other photos into this one. So for instance I would go to the next one and hit Control A to select all, Control C to copy, come back to this one and then hit Control V. And you can see I have my background layer and then the one that I just pasted. So I'm going to close out of that one because I no longer need it. Um, and then you can go about doing all of that with the rest of the layers. Now keep in mind you can also pull this one to the side and pull all of these ones, all of the tabs out individually and you can just use the move tool to do the same thing. So I like to try to keep all of these to one side. You can even group them in their own little set of tabs here if you want just so that you remember which one is your background image and if you forget you can always check the title there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag the rest of these in here. Remember you guys only need to have five of these so you could choose the five that are the most different if you want or the five that you like the most. Alright so here I am I've got eight versions of them because if I count the background that's eight. Now from this point you can reorder them if you want. I'm a little bit compulsive about these things so I am going to reorder them but it's really not a problem. I don't care what order they're in but I want them going from the bluest to the most orange potentially just so that we can get an idea of the Kelvin scale. All right, the next thing that I'm going to do is just turn all these little eyeballs off. And then I am going to move these based on trying to match them up as close as possible. It's okay if you don't get them exact. It's going to be hard because you moved your camera anyway. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to drop the opacity over here and shimmy this over to as close as I can to matching up and I'm using my arrows right now just to tweak it as much as I can and then I'm going to put the opacity back up and then I'll turn this one back on, turn the eye back on that take the opacity down, I want to get rid of this one, I don't really like it so dark that one's better, okay um, so I'll turn that one on, I'll drop the opacity and once again remember you if, if nothing is moving it's because you're not selected on anything and then I'm just going to try to line it up as close as possible. They'll move around a little bit, it'll be okay. And then bring that back to 100%. I'll turn on the eye for the next one, drop down the opacity, and basically I'm just going to do this for each one. I'm just going to try to get them as close as possible. Now I'm having an issue because I keep forgetting to click on to the next one. So I don't want to drop the opacity on this one anymore. That's where I want it to be. I want to click on this one and drop the opacity on this one. So you might be having some issues with that because, you know, even I do apparently as a teacher. All right, and here's my last one. Now once again, remember, you guys only need to have five and I'm going to work with five in just a minute. So let's decide which one we want to get rid of here. I think I'll get rid of this one because that's really close and I think I'll get rid of this one. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, five layers. All right, so for the next step, just so that you know at the end of this, I'm going to have each one of these show in strips at the end so I can compare and contrast what each different mode looks like in comparison to the other. So I want to be able to see all of them. However, I don't like all of these edges here and I know that they don't all line up at the bottom. So the first thing I'm going to do is crop this um, drawing here. It's also going to help me uh, make it a whole lot easier to put it into five even sections. So I can 
can click on my crop tool here or just hit C on my keyboard. And if you look up here, you'll notice that ratio is chosen. I think I'm going to switch that to the old width height resolution. Go ahead and do that, okay? And this is going to allow me to specify where I want it. So you can see that I had just put in 5 inches. That's the width. So I can put in 5 I N and then I'm going to leave the height empty for now and I definitely want to leave the resolution empty and then I can crop this so that I don't have any of these edges in here and I'm going to pick it up a little bit too so I think I'll make it maybe about like that and then where I when I have it where I want it I'll just hit this check mark then the next thing that I want to do is I want to be able to see where each one of those inches lands. So I'm going to turn on my rollers and you can do that by hitting Control R on your keyboard. Now look, I've got one, two, three, four, five. Nice and easy. Well, my guess is that maybe some of you guys don't have it like that. I think that some of you might have it looking like this where it's in the hundreds and thousands category that's because it's on pixels if you want to have it the way that I just did let me go ahead and show you how you get to that you go to edit preferences and then we're gonna choose units and rulers and then under rulers you want to make sure it says inches so then you'll see that this is where one inch ends this is two this is three, this is four, and this is five. And that made it nice and easy for us. Well, it will make it nice and easy for us in just a moment. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is we are going to make it as big as we possibly can. I'm going to hit Control Zero on my keyboard and that will fit it to the screen. And then I want to jump over to my Move tool because I want to get out of crop mode there. All right. So the nice thing about your rulers is that you can also grab guides from them. So guides, if I click and drag here, and I'm going to end up at this one inch mark, you can see that I'm following it up here. Now this guide is going to be something that I can follow, but if I were to print it out, it wouldn't show up. It's just for me in the design process. So I'm going to go ahead and put a guide here at each one of these points so that I can be sure that I've got it divided into five inches. And you can just mouse over them and if you didn't get them just right you can move them around like that. If you don't like, if you end up accidentally putting one on that you don't want, you can just click and drag it right back to the roller and it'll go away okay all right so now that we have these set up the next step is that we're going to start to use our selections to mask things so the backgrounds gonna stay where it is we definitely want to have our layers palette nice and available for this remember if your all of your layers aren't showing um, you can select this bar at the bottom here and just drag it down and you'll be able to see what's going on there all right so we're going to turn off all of these sections other than the last two so let's start with this one because the background's just going to stay how it is all right, so I want this piece to show for the background, but I want this piece to show for the second layer. So let's go ahead and I'm going to select this piece using my marquee tool. So I've got the rectangular marquee here and I want to use my guides see they'll snap right to where you put your guides so that's nice and convenient I'm going to drag all the way from the top and all the way to the bottom and then this is super easy I just click on my mask here and it's going to hide everything on this layer that doesn't belong to this little slice here so I'm just going to go ahead and rename these so I don't confuse you guys all right 
So then let's turn the eye on this one so that we can see that again. And obviously it's going to hide everything else. That's okay because we're about to get rid of that. So now we're working on this section here. Once again, I have my rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to click all the way to the top here and let it snap to my guide and take it all the way down. And you want to make sure that you're on this next one, that you're not on the last one, because this is where lots of errors happen when somebody is not on the right layer. So then we'll, we will click the mask. So you can start to see how things shift with the white balance. All right, so now we want to turn on the next layer and select it. So remember, it's going to be a lighter gray if it's selected. And once again, we're just going to select that box right there and choose a mask. And let's go ahead and do that to the last one. So we want to turn it on and select it. And once again, we're going to select just the portion that we want to keep. And when we click on the mask, it's going to hide everything other than the portion we just selected. So now the cool thing is that I can see all of the different varieties that my camera can create just by changing the white balance. What a huge difference that is in all of these photos. If you want to be able to see what it looks like without the guides, you can go to view and then down to clear guides and that will get rid of your guides as well. So this is what you're going to end up with. This is what you're going to turn in for your final. So you will put, you will save it first as your PSD and then you want to do a save as and save it as a JPEG and then you are going to turn that JPEG in for your final white balance piece. Good luck guys!